hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel welcome back to another true crime episode with ushi guys i'm so sorry that i didn't upload last week your girl caught the flu okay i was having flu that was so bad it almost took me out like that flu was just like on another level but i'm fine now as but then as you can see like my nose is a little bit still stuffed but i'm good like i'm fine i'm 100 percent fine guys today's case all of them are gruesome right but today's one mm, today's one is a special type of gruesome because what this man does yo <laughs> let me just let me just get into this let me just stop rambling and just get into it let me get into it so today's case takes place in the year 1998 so for all my 1998 babies this one is yours okay claim him this man is yours claim him today's case takes place takes place in swakopmund and it takes place in the year 1998 swakopmund is a beautiful town to a swakopmund is the town that you would like to go to when you're having your vacation your holidays it's a vacation destination type of place it's beautiful there's the ocean there's the beach there's all these beautiful tourist attraction places if you want to relax go to soccer Mund. anyway so unfortunately beautiful places bad 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 things happen in beautiful places and today's case is an example of that the person in today's case is thomas adolf mm -hmm. florin yes we are going to talk about thomas today thomas adolf florin was at the time of today's case events he was only 32 years old thomas was married to his wife monica florin and she was 30 years old together they had two children they had a two-year-old boy as well as a four-year-old girl now the couple lived in swagomon it was you know your typical nuclear family i am assuming things were going great in the first years of their marriage but at the point of today's case the things in the marriage of thomas and monica were not going so well they were not looking good in a sense that monica was frustrated with thomas she was frustrated with Thomas because Thomas could not keep a job. It's not like he couldn't get a job. He just couldn't keep it. At first, he was a fireman. He became a carpenter. And then he became a chef. So Thomas was like jumping from one job to the next. And Monica was not having it. She, was not, she did not like the fact that he was doing this. Because this means that he was not bringing in a consistent you know a consistent stream of income into the household oh the days when thomas is not having a job monica actually had to step in and help out with you know the bills and stuff like the stuff like that so meaning that she had to take care of the kids and get a job at the same time so this was like too much on her and she decided that she has had enough and she is going to separate from her husband thomas and this is what happens when they separate, they don't separate in a sense that they are living in two different houses. Mm -mm, no, what they did or what they decided to do is they decide that they are going to separate while still living within the same house, meaning that they are going to be sleeping in different bedrooms. They are going to be sleeping in. You are going to be sleeping in that bedroom. I'm going to be sleeping in that bedroom. But then we are going to be sleeping in the same house. But we are not together. So it was that type of situation. It was that type of arrangement. But I have a theory as to why. My theory I am going to edit at the end of the video. But I have a theory as to why. While Monica and Thomas were separated. And they were living in two different bedrooms. Monica started dating again. She started to see somebody. She met a man. Things became serious. The reason why I'm saying things became serious is because they were spotted together. They were spotted going on dates. They were spotted going on walks on the beach. They were spotted holding hands. You know, it was all cozy fuzzy and people could see that there's, you know, something developing between them. So this is the reason why, you know, it was reported that she started to see somebody else. 
I don't know whether this is, is what triggered Thomas to do the things that he goes on doing, but this is actually one of the defense that he used in the court. While Monica is having this affair, Thomas received news and this news stated that he had to return to Germany and his staying visa in Namibia was coming to an end. It was being withdrawn, it was expiring, he had to return to Germany. Thomas went to Monica and he asked Monica to return to Germany with him. So he was like, you, me and the kids, we return to Germany together. Monica said no. She was like... I have no reason to return to Germany. I am happy in Namibia. Plus, she has started to see somebody else. So obviously, she had no reason to return to Germany with Thomas. So she refused to return to Germany with Thomas because she wanted to stay in Namibia. After Monica refused to return to Germany with Thomas, Thomas decided that he's going to go to Ventuk. He went to Ventuk. He went and got the freight containers. Freight containers are those huge containers that people use to, you know, pack in goods and, you know, things in if you're traveling from one country to the next. He got those containers and then he started to pack his things because he had to return to Germany. So he was preparing to return to Germany. After he was done, he drove back to Swakopmund and he went to Monica to go convince her again for the very last time to please return to Germany with him and the kids. Monica again refused because like I said, she had no reason to return to Germany and she loved being in Namibia. So she didn't want to return to Germany. With that, Thomas then decided that he is going to do what he decided to do because what he went on to do it's just nasty i don't know why he couldn't just think of other options i feel like there were just like so many other options that he could have thought of just that one out of thomas but anyway let's just I, I i don't like my job is just to report the news so let me just report it thomas decided that he is going to return to germany with or without monica and he will be taking the kids with him if you are a sensitive viewer or if you are eating, I suggest that uh, you put your food down. And also, if you don't really want to hear the gruesome part of the case, I'm going to get into that now. I will suggest that you just skip ahead. This is what Thomas goes on to do. In, in, in June, Thomas went over to Monica's room because remember I said the two of them were sleeping in separate bedrooms. He went over to Monica's room. Monica was sleeping. He had to wait until she was sleeping. It's just, uh, yeah. He went over to her room. He crept over to her bed. He checked whether she was sleeping. And then once he saw that Monica was sleeping, he took a hammer and he smashed her skull with it. It was reported that he only hit her once and that was fatal enough to actually cause her fatal injuries and then she actually you know instantly died you, she was she didn't stand a chance after thomas made sure that monica was deceased he dragged her body to the bathroom where he proceeds to cut her body into pieces he took the internal organs and then he um, stripped off flesh from some of the bones he took all this, put it in a plastic bag, and then he went to go dump it into the ocean. He came back home, took the other remains, the skeletal remains. He cut them up into pieces. He boiled them. He baked some, and then he cooked some. So the ones that he boiled and baked, he took them, and then he put them in a red plastic um, bucket, and then he put them in the ceiling of his house. He took her other skeletal remains as well as her skull and then he put them in a plastic bag and he hid them inside the house. Some of her other remains, he cooked them in a pot and then he cooked them so bad that I think he was hoping that they would burn and they would not be recognizable so people would not know what it is that was cooking because it was reported that when the pot was discovered, the pot was burned beyond recognition like people couldn't tell what was inside the pot now if you are watching this you have to remember that thomas was actually doing all this 
cooking up the mother of his children while his children slept in the other room so i that's just mm, that's just evil that's just pure evil there's no any other way to explain this why would you do that after he was done with uh trying to dispose monica's body he cleaned up everything everything was scrapped clean he was now ready to return to germany the day before he left to go to Venduk so that he can, you know, get on a flight to go back to Germany, Petra visited Thomas. This is the part where I introduced Petra. Petra is a very close friend of Monica. She is like Monica's bestie. She hasn't heard from Monica for a while and she wanted to see Monica to, you know, find out how she's doing. So she came by the house to come check up on Monica as well as the kids as well as Thomas. Because like I said, she hasn't heard from her friend. Monica was not picking up her calls. Obviously, she was not picking up her calls because Monica was at this point deceased. So Petra came by the house. She had dinner with Thomas and the kids. They enjoyed dinner together. Monica was asking him all sort of questions as to where Monica is. And Thomas was telling Petra that Monica is no longer in the country. Monica ran off to Cape Town with one of her lovers she just abandoned him and the kids she left them behind and she's not coming back so now petra i'm guessing or i'm assuming she was asking him as to then how come you haven't reported her to the police when was the last time that you spoken to her what did she say how is she why is she not picking up her calls you know obviously you know petra was bombarding Thomas with all of these questions. Thomas was nervous when he was answering these questions. And also, besides being nervous, the answers that he was giving, they were not giving. The answers were just not making sense. He was giving all these answers, but then they were just not responding. You see, one plus one has to equals to two. But when it comes to Thomas, it was giving four. So Petra was confused. She was like, what is going on? So she knew something was up she knew something there was actually a part whereby he told petra that monica took her black shoes monica had these shoes that she loved so much they were black shoes with gold trimmings on them and thomas said that she took those shoes along with her before petra left she asked thomas if she can go to the bathroom to go wash her hands so petra went into the bathroom she was washing her hands and while she was busy washing her hands that is when she spotted the shoes you know the black shoes that thomas said monica took with her she spotted the shoes in the bathroom inside the house by the shower now to petra this was shocking because didn't you say that you know she took the shoes then which shoes are these ones immediately petra was like he is lying something is not adding up he is lying she said good night she kissed the kids and she left when she left she went home to her boyfriend at the time she went home to her boyfriend and she told him everything that had happened. She also told him about the shoes that she found inside the bathroom. And her and the boyfriend decided that, you know what, you are right. The boyfriend was like, you are right. Something is not adding up. Let's just go to the police officers. So the, the both of them decided that they are going to take this case to the officers so that they can get the answers that they want which is exactly what they do before petra and her boyfriend went to the police offices thomas in the meantime was trying to flee thomas knew what he did and he was trying to get out of the country as soon as he possibly can so he drove immediately to Vendok. he went to the airport he was trying to go he was just trying to run away from this country because he knew what he did at the airport he was having the two children with him now you see when you are at the airport and you're trying to travel with children as young as those ones if the other parent is not with you you need to show uh some form of consent papers you know to say that okay she or he is okay with you taking the taking the children with you so meaning that thomas for him to be able to travel with the children to germany he needed monica's signature now we both know me and you we know that thomas doesn't have monica's signature so this is where the problem came because now the officers at the airport are asking him where is the mother of the child 
And Thomas obviously kept on repeating the story that Monica ran away to Cape Town with a lover. He didn't know where she is. She ha he hasn't spoken to her. And the officers at the airport, they were not buying this. They were just like, mm, okay, something is up. Like something was fishy. I don't know why they were not buying his story. Maybe it's because maybe they asked him to call her and then he couldn't because like, a, again, like I said, she's deceased. So obviously he couldn't call her. Or I don't even know why the officers were not buying his story. But all I know is that the officers were just not buying his story at all. So while all this is going on, the officers asked him to open his suitcases they asked him to open his containers and you know remember remember the freight containers that i said that he traveled to Bentuk, he went to go prepare his containers his freight containers and all that those containers the officers asked him to open those containers and when he does open those containers boy oh boy they saw things that thomas had no business having in his possession let me tell you what they saw first everything seemed normal it was just containing normal furniture normal everything everything seemed normal until the police officers looked closer and this is where they saw wildlife products in his possession he was having cheetah skins he was having six life tortoises in my mind i was like what is he doing with six live tortoises so i had to do a little bit of research on my own i went on google and mm, apparently tortoises like one just one on the black market in germany it is worth thirty thousand euros if you convert that into namibian dollars that is like half a million that's like five hundred thousand something and i'm just like mm, that is a lot of money it makes sense why he was having them in his possession so this man was trying to smuggle all these illegal wildlife products out of the country illegally and because of this Namib the namibian police became involved and he was arrested and he was sent down to jail now when he was arrested he was not arrested because of monica's death actually in the meantime while he was at the airport being arrested and all those things are happening petra was busy trying to get the police over to thomas house in swakopun so that they can do a little search on their own because petra just had a gut feeling she just knew she knew something is wrong so she went over to the police station she pleaded with the police she told the police please just come have a look at the house and if there's nothing there's nothing but let's just try to just see what is it that we can find guys listen we all need a friend like petra petra is the real hero in today's story period point blank anyway so the police officers listened to petra and they went over to thomas's house the one in Sokomund. In the meantime, in Venduk, Thomas was sitting in a jail house for the illegal wildlife products that he was trying to smuggle out of the country. And also the police were asking him, where is the mother of the children? Now that you are in jail, obviously the children need to be with the mom. Where is the mom? Thomas could not tell them where the mom is. The police, they did not, uh, something was just not adding up with them. So they decided that, you know what, you're going to sit in jail until, you know, you, you answer some of these questions because you are just not giving us the answers that we want. <sighs> we are back in Swakop Munt now. They went over to M Monica's house and they started to search the house. When they got inside the house, the house was squeaky, squeaky, squeaky clean. Thomas knew what he did. He didn't want to get caught. So he decided that he is going to remove all the evidence. He's going to clean the house and wipe everything clean. And that is exactly what he did. He used all the Ajax, child. He used all the bridge, everything. And he cleaned the house. So when they got inside the house, the house was clean. Even though the house was clean, there was a particular smell that was coming from the house that was just not sitting well with them. They were like, where is this smell coming from? Yes, the house is clean. The house looks clean. But where is this smell coming from? They traced the smell 
until they reached a certain spot inside the house they went into the ceiling of that particular spot where the smell was the strongest and they when they went into the ceiling this is where they found some of the remains of monica's body but you see at that time they didn't know that it was actually monica they had to confirm so they took the remains and then they sent it in to Windhoek for forensic testing and the test <clears throat> the tests are the one that actually confirmed that this is actually Monica's remains. They also discovered her other remains. They discovered her skull as well as other skeletal remains. They also discovered the remains that were in the pot, the ones that were badly, badly burned. And guys, this was just heartbreaking for Petra. Imagine discovering the remains of your friend. I cannot even begin to imagine the horror that Petra must have went through. The call went to the police officers in Windhoek and they said that that man that you have in your cell, do not let that man go. I'm just glad that he was not able to actually cross the border. Because that would have been like harder to arrest him. The trial started. So Thomas was maintaining his innocence. He was saying that he did not do anything. He did not do anything to Monica. If anything, it was actually not him who hurt her or who murdered her. It was one of her lovers. Or, and he was also at one point pinning the blame on Petra. Talking about, yeah, Petra could have been the person who murdered her. But it was just not him. He denied deny 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 he was just like it's not me it's not me i don't know who did it i don't know who did it so that is where he was standing he was standing on his innocence and he denied this for years guys years yes i am talking about he got arrested he got sentenced in 1998 all those years he has he was denying his involvement in her murder the trial started the evidence was presented the evidence were there were six footprints that were discovered leading from the bedroom to the bathroom there were blood splatter on one of the pajama tops of monica there was blood splatter found on his jersey and another damning evidence that actually nailed him to the coven like his last nail on the coven was in the bathroom you know the bathroom was clean right but then the police officers brought the uv light the one for the blue light to you know those lights that you put in a room and then you turn the lights off and then you turn it on and then it shows blood splatter that has been cleaned off that one that light was it was brought to thomas bathroom and it was reported that it lit up like a christmas tree there was just blood splatter everywhere and that was like one of his damning damning besides you know the remains that were already found in the house that was also, also one of the evidence that just nailed him to the ground and i'm just glad they did because this man was just like unbelievably denying everything and that's just pissing me off like why are you denying things while the evidence is there why but anyway we will never know Thomas denied everything until 2013. This is when he finally admitted to everything. By that time, he was already sentenced. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. No, he actually is going to get parole after 25 years. He's going to get parole this year or next year. Between this year and next year, he's going to get parole. I don't know. Maybe he might be free. Maybe he might be not. <laughs> I don't know. He could be free this year. He could be free next year. But all I'm saying is that is he rehabilitated? Is he not? I don't know. But yeah this one was gruesome this one was bad uh i don't know what to say guys so i yeah i don't know what to say also the commentary yes the reason why i'm guessing that they decided to stay in the same house is because well thomas was leaving namibia anyway so maybe they thought that once thomas is gone then monica can have the whole house to herself and he doesn't need to go stay elsewhere that's just my theory that's what i assume i don't know but i think that is the reason why but yeah, that's just the only commentary I have. All I can say is I feel like Thomas has just had other options. So murdering Monica was not the solution to his problem. So now Thomas, his children are in Germany. 
the son wants his father to come back he has forgiven his father he has nothing against his father he actually wants him to return to be out of prison so that he can return to germany so that they can start a carpenter business together as for the sister however mm -mm, she is not having it the last time i read anything about her she said she does not want to do anything with her father she does not want to talk to him she does not want to do anything with him she has children now and she does not even regard him as the grandfather of her children she is now staying or she grew up with her mom's sister as well as her husband the husband of the mom's sister so to her those are the grandparents of her children not thomas she does not want to do anything with thomas maybe one day she will forgive him maybe not i don't know but all i know is that that is the end of today's case and with that guys i would like to say thank you so much for spending your time with me and i will see you in the next video guys oof hey <laughs> yo uh -uh.